Hey, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about homogeneous mixtures. Um, don't forget you should be taking Cornell notes. Um, you need to write a summary at the end of your Cornell notes, and I will be checking your notes in class. First, we're going to review a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about elements. What are elements? Well, an element is a substance that cannot be broken down any farther into some other things that have different chemical properties. So if it cannot be broken down any farther to the point where you'll get new um, substances out of it with different chemical properties, then we call it an element. In a nutshell, it basically means that you have something that's made only out of one type of atom, and one type and only one type alone. And remember, elements are stored or organized on the periodic table of elements. What is a compound? Well, a compound is when you have two or more different types of atoms that are chemically bonded together. And when they chemically bond together, these different types of atoms, they lose their old properties and create a brand new substance with brand new, completely different properties. So for instance, water is a combination of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Hydrogen, the element hydrogen, is a gas. The element of oxygen is a gas. The element hydrogen is extremely flammable. Um, the element of oxygen is also flammable. Um, but when you chemically combine them together, you bond them together chemically, now they create a brand new substance, water, and that brand new substance has completely different properties than the hydrogen and the oxygen had before. It's a liquid. Um, water is definitely not flammable. Um, it is drinkable, whereas the oxygen, the oxygen is breathe, breathable, but the hydrogen before wasn't breathable. Um, so basically, when they chemically bond and make a new substance with brand new properties that are completely different from the two substances that were put together, we call that a compound. We're going to talk more about compounds later on this year. Um, we're going to talk about how they're named and what some of the popular compounds are. But today, we're going to talk about what is a mixture, and specifically a homogeneous mixture. A mixture is when you combine two or more substances, but there's no chemical reaction or combination that happens. So this is when you take two or more different substances and put them together, but you do not chemically bond them. Okay? They're only physically put together. Nothing new is made. So more on one a mixture, the two substances keep their original properties. So the two separate substances that you put together, they keep their original properties. You don't make anything new. There are no brand new properties that come out of it. Nothing new is made. The things are just mixed together. Uh, mixtures combine things physically, not chemically, um, in no specific proportions. They just mix. Okay? So it's when things are just mixed together, but they don't chemically bond to make anything new. Um, solids, liquids, and gases can be combined to create a mixture, so it happens with all three states of matter. Um, there's two main types of mixtures, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Today we're going to focus just on homogeneous mixtures. Um, we'll talk about heterogeneous mixtures in about a week, week and a half. So what is a homogeneous mixture? Homogeneous mixtures are basically mixtures that are the same all the way through. The prefix homo stands for the same, just like when, earlier in the year when we talked about um, homozygous and heterozygous um, genes. And remember, homozygous genes meant that you had two genes that were the same type, um, either recessive or dominant. In this case, the prefix homo means the same, and homogeneous mixtures are basically the same all the way through. Homogeneous mixtures have a uniform appearance and composition all the way through them. They look exactly the same all the way through. They are, they have the same composition all the way through the mixture. I like to say if you took a homogeneous mixture and you took the first spoonful and the last spoonful of the mixture, they would be exactly the same. Okay? Um, examples would be things like soda. If you open a brand new bottle of soda and you take the first cup of soda, or you take the last cup of soda, assuming you haven't let the soda sit around for a week and a half and get flat, okay? but assuming you do it right away, the first cup of soda and the last cup of soda taste exactly the same. Okay? Um, another example would be I basically sugared tea, tea that has sugar mixed in it. 
If you take the first cup of tea or the last cup of tea, they taste exactly the same. They look exactly the same. Um, another example would be salt water, pure salt water. Again, if you take the first cup or the last cup, they're pretty much exactly the same. Um, so a homogeneous mixture is something that is exactly the same all the way through, has a uniform appearance and a uniform composition. So what is a solution? A solution is basically another name for homogeneous mixtures. So when you hear people talk about solutions, they're talking about homogeneous mixtures. They are the same thing. A solution is a mixture of two or more substances. Um, at least two substances must be mixed together in order to have a solution. And the mixture is the same all the way through. Again, it's a synonym for homogeneous mixtures. Now, a solution has two parts. It has the substance that's being dissolved in the, in the liquid okay, or in the solvent, um, and that's called the solute. So the thing that you are dissolving is called the solute. The thing that you are dissolving the solute in is called the solvent. And in most cases, the solvent is water, but not always. Um, so for example, if I had sugar and tea, and I wanted to mix the sugar into the tea to make a solution of sugared tea. The solute would be the sugar. That's the thing that's doing the dissolving. The solvent would be the basically the tea. Um, that's what the, 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 solute, the sugar is dissolving in. Same thing with salt water. If I had salt water and I want to make salt water, I would take salt, that would be the solute, and I would take water, that would be the solvent. Okay. So whatever you're dissolving is called the solute. Whatever the, it's being dissolved in is called the solvent. Um, there is a term called solubility. Solubility is the ability to dissolve a solute in a solvent. So it's the ability to dissolve something in something else. And there's some terms you're going to hear. If a substance has high solubility, that means that you can dissolve a whole lot of it in the liquid or in the solvent. If a substance has low solubility, it means you can only dissolve a little bit of it in the solvent. And if a substance cannot be dissolved at all in the solvent, we call it insoluble. The prefix in stands for not, so not soluble. So let me show you in the picture here. This is a good example. You may want to write this down. We have basically three types of solutes and we have the solvent water. Okay. So we're going to dissolve these solutes in the water. Okay. And the water is going to be 20 degrees Celsius. NaCl stands for table salt. So at 20 degrees Celsius, when the water is 20 degrees Celsius, you can dissolve 36 grams of salt in the water. And what that means, guys, is that you can completely dissolve it in the water and there's none on the bottom of the container. Because let's face it, we could pour salt in the water all day long. We could pour salt in the water till we pretty much have mostly just salt in there, but it wouldn't dissolve anymore. Okay, At some point, it's going to reach its con saturation point or its concentration point, and it's not going to be able to dissolve anymore in the solvent. But in this case, it turns out you can take 36 grams of salt and dissolve it in this water, and it completely dissolves away. This K stands for potassium, CL stands for chlorine, so if you, hopefully you guessed it, it's potassium chloride. If I put potassium chloride in water at this temperature, it turns out that only 34 grams will completely dissolve in the water and not leave anything behind. And this one looks like it's potassium nitrogen oxide or potassium nitrous oxide. Um... I'm not sure if that's the actual name for it, but it's potassium, nitrogen, and oxygen put together. And if we put those in the water and dissolve it until it's completely saturated, saturated means you can't dissolve anything else in the liquid. Okay, it's all dissolved. You can't do anymore. It won't hold anymore. So if you dissolve this until it's saturated, that would be 31.6 grams. We would say that the table salt has high solubility in water you're able to dissolve more of it in the water than the others. We would say that the uh, potassium, nitrogen, and oxygen mixture ha or compound in the water has low solubility because you can dissolve less of it in the water. 
Now let's say I added to this table and I said sand. Let's say I put sand and water in there. Well, if you have sand that has no dirt on it, just pure sand, sand will not dissolve in water no matter what you do with it. Okay? You can stir and stir and stir till the cows come home. It will not dissolve in water. If I had that, then it would be zero grams solubility, and I would say that the sand is insoluble in the water. So salt is has high solubility because you can dissolve a lot of it. Uh, the potassium nitrogen oxygen compound has low solubility because you can only dissolve a little bit. Sand would be insoluble. And remember, there's a saturation point for the liquid, which means that you can, there's a point where you can't get any more of the solute to dissolve at all. It's done. It's full. Okay? And at that point, you'd say you hit your saturation point. So some examples of the solutions. We've already talked a lot about a lot of them. Salt water, um, tea with sugar, vinegar, and not salsa with all that the chunks in it. But basically, if you have like hot sauce without the chunky stuff in it, just regular old hot sauce, like Frank's sauce, that would be considered to be a homogeneous mixture or a solution. Okay. Um, remember, dissolving things in other things is a physical um, change. We're basically just breaking down the salt or the sugar or the hot sauce into smaller and smaller particles that can't be seen, but they're still separate from the regular. They're still separate from the solvent. So there are some ways that you can separate homogeneous mixtures. It, it is harder to separate a homogeneous mixture that is the same all the way through than it is to um, separate a heterogeneous mixture, which we'll talk about in about a week and a half. But you can separate them, and here are the ways that most people do it. Um, you can separate a solute from a solvent by through evaporation. So for instance, if you leave salt water out, eventually the water will evaporate away and the salt will be left behind. You've basically separated that mixture. Um, there's something called chromatography. It's used basically with inks and colored dyes. So basically, if you put chromatography paper into an ink, um, the ink and the water, and you put that also into water, the, you know, the water will climb up, touch the ink, and it will pull the different colors of ink apart. That's called chromatography, and we're going to do a lab about that this week. And finally, distillation is where basically you heat up a homogeneous mixture. The, the solvent basically turns into steam and basically floats through this tube and lands over in this container, and the solute ends up being left behind. Okay? That's called distillation. Those are the three main ways you can separate a homogeneous mixture. So to review, a compound is a chemically bonded thing. It's when two or more atoms are chemically bonded together um, in set proportions, so in set amounts. Um, they have the new, you make something new with a compound and it has brand new properties that are different from the original properties in the elements. And it can only be separated chemically through um, electrolysis with electricity or something. Mixtures on the other hand, especially homogeneous mixtures, are not chemically combined. They're just mixed together. It's a physical change. You can combine the, the parts in any proportions you want. Um, they do not make a new substance. They do not make a new substance with different properties. And they can, only, they can be separated physically through either evaporation, chromatography, or distillation. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this presentation. Now you need to write your summary. When you get done writing your summary, um, you, can, you can either come see me or, or listen to the directions in class and I will give you a new lab, uh, station or a new lab to do. Thank you so much.